In today's video, we're gonna cover the concept of back tension in archery. What is back tension exactly? What are a few different things that make up back tension? And I'm also gonna give you a few things that you should absolutely not do when you're trying to achieve back tension in archery. So this video comes by request from one of my patrons who made it through my Discord server, which is a great little micro community within archery, by the way. To get access to that and to help support this channel, consider joining my YouTube memberships or my Patreon page. I'll have links in the description below and a card at the top up there on many different ways you can help support this channel. So back tension. What is back tension? How do you achieve back tension? And what should you avoid when thinking about back tension? The idea of what back tension is, is that you're using larger, bigger, stronger muscles in your back to hold the bow back, to pull it back. So that way the smaller muscles in your arms and your hands don't get so fatigued and you can shoot either heavier draw weight, more arrows, or be more consistent under pressure when it matters at a tournament or when it matters in the field. So using larger and bigger muscles is basically the principle of back tension because they are bigger, which is less susceptible to physiological changes when you're under pressure. You know, when your hormones start to change, when your heart rate increases and all sorts of different factors change when the pressure mounts, back tension in theory is more consistent and more stable from shot to shot, no matter the situation. So that means in your practice and in your competition, you're more likely to be the same type of archer using the same type of shot, the same type of shot process, hopefully, and therefore more consistent under pressure. Now the muscles in the back that you're supposed to be using are the trapezius muscles, the trap muscles, specifically more of the mid to lower trap and some of the rhomboids. The idea is to avoid using an upper trap because what that does is it will elevate the shoulder and cause a little bit of discomfort and it will definitely jam up the system and make things actually a little more harder to do. Archers that want to use more back tension naturally will want to feel more tension in their back compared to before. Those that have not experienced back tension before will try to use more of the muscles or more of the feeling in their mid to lower back, and that will be a cue as to if they are using back tension or not. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this. There are a couple of things that you need to pay attention to to make sure that you're not jamming up the system and actually making it harder and less efficient to do the movements and to pull your bow back. And I'll give you those here in a little bit. But first I wanna talk about more of how you actually get to use the back tension or how you actually use the correct muscles. The ideal way is to actually focus more on the movement and less on the muscles. You don't want to think about using individual specific muscles because you can actually confuse the system, confuse the body, and the central nervous system will do all sorts of different things to make you feel it more, but you may not actually be using it more, just feeling it more. So the general rule of thumb, the general principle is to think about moving your shoulder to actually lead with the shoulder, pulling the shoulder back, and not necessarily pulling the string back. Because I can pull the string back without moving my shoulder at all. If you pay attention to the shoulder as I go to draw, you'll see that the shoulder does not move all that much and the string hand moves a whole lot and the bicep tension actually increases a lot, showing me that I'm using my arm to pull the bow back and not my back. Now, the way that you should move to get the back to engage more is to move this shoulder more. So if you watch me draw the bow back now, you'll see that the shoulder is leading and moving a whole lot more than before and that is helping achieve back tension. Yes, there are two things happening at once here. Not only am I using more back tension and moving the body correctly, but of course you'll see that my alignment is getting better as I'm doing the correct thing with my back. That is kind of a natural thing and it is something that will just happen if you use back tension correctly. A side effect is you will naturally most likely have better alignment as well. Now the spot that I am using exactly on the shoulder to actually initiate the movement is the posterior deltoid area where teres is kind of intersecting somewhere in the back side of the shoulder. If you were to do a stretch, a very simple stretch of an arm cross body, if you're tight enough and inflexible enough like myself, you'll feel a stretch in the back side of the shoulder in the posterior deltoid area. And if you just think about using that stretch to initiate the draw, that's what will give you back tension. That's what will engage that lower to mid trap muscle more naturally, and it will make things much easier. Now you'll notice I'm using a single string bow here, a recurve, a bare bow more specifically, but it's no different than any other bow. 
compound, you have to draw the bow back in a very different way to get the bow back at full draw. But once you're at the wall and you're at full draw, as you come into anchor, you can move that shoulder to make that hand come into anchor and you will start to use more back tension. As you go to activate the release, when you go to pull, don't necessarily pull with the bicep, pull with the hand. Try thinking about moving that shoulder around and behind you. I prefer a bit more in an arcing fashion and use that back side of the shoulder to initiate the movement to activate the back, activate the correct muscles in the back, and in theory, you should have more back tension. Same thing goes with any style of archery, traditional, barebow, recurve, compound, I guess maybe not crossbow, that's really the only thing that it wouldn't apply to, but all other forms of archery, that's how you use back tension. Try to use the shoulder to make the movement happen, and then the body will naturally use the correct muscles. Now why I said specifically you shouldn't think about moving and engaging particular types of muscles, and I haven't been very specific about you should feel it right here, is because you can actually flex muscles and feel them more without actually using them correctly, jamming up the system, and actually preventing movement from happening. Meaning the correct movement, how you set the clicker off, how you maintain draw length, or potentially how you activate your release when you're shooting compound. The easiest way to illustrate this is to do a simple bicep curl. Now I can think about moving my hand towards my face in a bicep curl, and it's very easy, very simple, and my body just does it. It uses the correct muscle, the bicep, without me even thinking about it, and barely with me feeling it because my hand weighs nothing. Now if I loaded it with some weight, like a, a dumbbell, a barbell, or something like that, I would feel more of the bicep. But I can do the movement very efficiently by just moving the hand. If I think about the muscle, I will feel the muscle more. If I flex the muscle and the opposing muscle, I can feel my bicep more than I would with a 15 pound, 20 pound weight in my hand, but my hand's not moving and it's requiring a whole lot of effort. I can squeeze my bicep really hard and my hand's not moving, thus not activating my release, thus not increasing my draw length, maintaining my draw length, or setting my clicker off. So what I do is I think about the correct movement, the hand coming to my face, which activates the correct muscle, which makes it work efficiently and doesn't require any extra thought, any extra effort. And instead of thinking about the muscle, I'm thinking about the movement of the hand and everything just works out in the long run. That's why I'm telling you to use the back side of the shoulder to initiate with the shoulder, initiate with that stretch that you get, or potentially have a partner tap you on the posterior deltoid area when you're going to start to draw the bow back as you're coming into anchor if you're shooting compound. And that is enough of a cue to say, use this to pull the bow back, which makes the mid to lower trap muscles and the rhomboids activate correctly and that's back tension. Focusing on the muscles, feeling the tension in the muscles is something you can monitor to make sure you're doing it correctly over time, but it should not be a focal point because you could flex that muscle, jam the system up, and never make your draw length any longer, and thus never making the shot happen. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Hit that subscription button down below and the notification bell. I'm working on making this channel a great resource to all types of archers, producing this content for free for archers around the world to enjoy. And I can't thank my supporters enough who make this channel possible. If you're interested in supporting this channel, there's many different links in the description below. And if you wouldn't mind, comment below and let me know some stuff you'd like me to cover. I want to make sure I'm producing relevant content and I want to help more archers around the world get better at archery.